to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and with me in the studio is Dylan Baird, founder of Philly Food Works. Philly Food Works, wow. It works. It works. I, in fact, I was going to ask, how'd you get that name? Yeah, Why Philly that's Food a great works? question. Um, <clears throat> so we were thinking a lot about, oh, what do we name it? And we were thinking of like good food and, um, mm -hmm. you know, lots of things like that that are kind of these tag words. And um, they all felt very fun and, and, and lively, but kind of what we were going for was we wanted to be serious about what we're doing. Um, you? Serious? Yeah, okay. me serious. The guy with, you know, <laughs> dirty garlic. Okay, we're um, going to get to that because I do want to know <laughs> about that. Um, and so, what, you know, what we're really trying to create with Philly Food Works is um, a new infrastructure for how we bring our food into the city. Mm -hmm. um, so similar to how we have, you know, a gas works and a water works, um, we want to build oh, Philly's Food Works. Um, okay. So it's a, you know, uh, it's a network of routes and trucks and people um, that are bringing food into the city and are really focused on um, ethically produced, uh, sustainable for the environment and for people, um, which is, you know, to the contrary of a lot of our, of the traditional food system in America and really the world. That, that's so true. That's yeah. so true. And that's, that's so in line with what this program is about. Cool. I mean, it's all about significant. And mm -hmm. what what sort of led you to say this is what I want to do as and now as yeah. opposed to later yeah so I started out um, I mean my my family's always been into eating vegetables and buying food from the farmers market and things like that so I guess mm -hmm. sort of on a subconscious level that's that's been part of who I am um, and then I was doing while I was at going to school at Temple University um, I was working at a nonprofit in West Philadelphia doing mm -hmm. urban farming. Mm -hmm. um, and we were trying to build this self-sustaining urban farm, um, self-sustaining financially. And it didn't really work and ultimately it was better set up for an educational model that was funded by grants and things like that. Um, but what we realized while we were farming is that one of our main, uh, the main obstacles that we had was distribution of the food. And a lot of the other people, the small producers, just that who are our friends, um, farmers and stuff, had a similar problem. So we created Philly Food Works to try to be that distribution solution for a number of the small producers in the region. And it started out with just farming, but now we've expanded to bakers, people making coffee, um, everything, you know, as large of an operation as Metropolitan Bakery um, to as small as an operation of a woman who bakes bread in a pizza shop, you know, when the pizza shop is closed from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Totally cool. I mean, I personally have participated with Philly Food Works, and I've been amazed about, I mean, on your side, it's about distribution. Mm -hmm. On the side of the consumer, it's about going online and suddenly having access to yeah. locally sourced food, these great photos, and literally with a click of a button, you can fill your basket and you can have food delivered you know, where you work, in my case, yeah. um, or uh, a location near you. How did you kind of pull all that together? Because how many products do you have right now available? Uh, so on our online market, we have anywhere from, I'd say, 400 to 600 products at a given time. Um, you know, uh, we have about 50 different distribution points around the mm -hmm. city. Um, mm -hmm. So it can be you know, CCP, um, it could be a public cafe, it could just be a private, you know, someone's house, mm -hmm. and they say, yeah, you can put share, you can put these boxes of food in my backyard. I was tempted. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, I like it because it's kind of, it's, it's um, you know, using underutilized space. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So a corner in a coffee shop or someone's backyard, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's this distribution network um, all over the city and, and now moving into the suburbs. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a long two years. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been a lot of emails, um, but I think what's been really helpful and made it a lot easier is that people are really interested in supporting this different kind of food system. Absolutely. Um, so it's really easy to find allies. You know, we 
we pay our we, the different cafes or the site hosts. We'll give them some food, um, either vegetables or they can just get money in our online market. But you know, it's pretty nominal amount compared to the service that they're providing us. Mm -hmm. And people don't do it for the box of vegetables. They do it because right. they want to support this different food system. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that people attaching and and believing in what in our mission and the impact that we're trying to have has made it a lot easier to grow that system and that model. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what you brought today and why yeah. this item. How does it reflect who you're So about? what I brought today are garlic ramps. Um, mm. So most people are, you know, everyone's familiar with garlic. Um, yeah, but what it smells like garlic. <laughs> smells like garlic, yeah, and it, it tastes like garlic, but it's a little bit sweeter. Mm. Uh, my favorite is actually um, uh, grilling them. They're just like the best for early spring barbecues. And... Um, what they are, these, I brought these because I think this kind of shows some of the diversity of the different products we have and who we like to work with. Mm -hmm. So these are forged by a guy named David Siller. Um, David Siller is kind of a jack of all trades. Um, he does some, he makes sauerkraut, he does some farming, he does some foraging. Um, and he goes out to the state forests and picks these garlic ramps. Um, they grow wild. They're not, you can't cultivate them, which is why it's kind of so exciting because you really get like two to three weeks a year where garlic ramps oh, are wow. available. And then okay. there won't be any garlic ramps again until next spring. How does this, I mean, when you say state forage, forest, is he breaking any rules? No. Foraging? Uh, no, no, I mean, okay. it's anybody could go there and do this. Um, okay. You know, and that's one of the interesting things is we're so disassociated from where food comes from that you sort of, it's like, <clears throat> if it didn't come, if you didn't go and get it at a grocery store, then you can't eat it. You know, but we walk around around us and you can eat all kinds of things that are mm -hmm. growing. You know, wild onions or just like mm -hmm. your backyard might have an, a, you know, a beautiful salad in it. But mm -hmm. you don't think about it. You just look at it as like, oh, that's a weed. Mm -hmm. You know, so essentially people look at these as a weed. Um, and, you know, I look at them as delicious. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and grilling, how, how would you grill this? I mean, so you just take the roots off. And then I just throw them on the grill, a little salt, pepper, olive oil. Um, and the leaves kind of shrivel up and get crispy, and they're good. Um, and then the, the root is just really soft. Um, and he's just, you know, he's, he's kind of got this bootleg operation going, and he sells to a lot of the nicer restaurants in town. Mm -hmm. um, he sells with us. And, you know, it's the kind of, it kind of shows some of the breadth of who we work with. You know, it's somebody who's... Um, you know, this is not big business. This is mm -hmm. not factory farming. He's and he's doing it in a way that's good for the environment. So you know, he's not going to go there and pick every single ramp because if he picks mm. every single ramp, they're not going to come back next year. Right. So right. he'll he'll take about a foot row and harvest a hundred feet. You know, in the next year, he'll take a foot row next to that and harvest a hundred feet, and then you know, mm. like that. And then five years later, he'll be back at his first row where they will have all regrown. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, thinking about. Um, the land and the space and all of that that you're getting the food from. Definitely significant yeah. in terms of impacting our environment, impacting how we receive food, um, impacting how we think of food. Mm -hmm. How's the business model working? So the business model is working well. Um, we started out as kind of a traditional farm share model, mm -hmm. um, which is you sign up and you say, you know, I want to get a box of produce every week. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just get this box of produce and you don't really have a lot of choice in what comes each week. Um, and we've had to adapt that a lot as it goes on. Um, so now what we do is you say, I want to get a box of produce. And then what we'll do is we'll upload your account with the items. You can see what's coming and then you can delete any of the items you don't want and you can add any items from our online market. Um, and we also had a thing where in the beginning when you signed up, you used to have to kind of commit for a season, you know, and you have to pay some money up front. But now we've, we've shifted that um, so that you don't have to commit for a season and you can actually do pay as you go. Mm -hmm. um, it's great when people do pay up front because what we'll do is we'll take a portion of that money and then give it to the farmers. Mm -hmm. So that way they can buy seeds, they can make capital improvements on their farm. Um, and it's really, you know, it's really about crowdfunding farmers. Because mm. um, in the traditional model, what happens with a small farm is that they put out all this money for seed, for you know, irrigation tape, for you know, just everything. And then if they have a bad harvest, well, now they're in debt. Right, right. You know, and so there's still the possibility that they could have a bad harvest, except with us, they're paying off their debt with carrots. Mm -hmm. And we have, an, we have an invested interest in them paying off their debt. So if mm -hmm. they say like, 
hey, you know, my carrot, you know, my, I don't know, but tomato crop wasn't that well, but my carrot crop was great. Can you help me sell these carrots? You know, there's that link with us where we'll start, we'll really push carrots and we'll look for other outlets. We might just push them to our customers and say, look at all these great recipes with carrots. You know, mm -hmm. keep buying carrots. You know, <laughs> Farmer John <laughs> needs you to buy carrots so he can pay us back, right, you know. Right, um, right. But it's, you know, it's about creating significant relationships um, where, you know, the different people in the supply chain and the different people, traditionally, you know, you're kind of pitted against each other. Mm -hmm. the, you know, there's like the middleman and there's this evil person and they're leveraging all the information to, you know, shrink, shrink uh, what they pay to the farmer and increase what they pay to the, you know, the consumer. Um, and we're trying to build a bond between the two. Mm -hmm. And so that way everybody's, you know, it's a successful thing for everybody, not just for a couple people. And, and I, you know, feel that as a customer also that you've been very open to feedback. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's opportunities to suggest maybe a small producer or, um, you know, order if something's out of stock, you know, say, hey, can, you know, you make yeah, sure that there's totally. five of those. Um, and you have meats. Um, yep. I've ordered lamb. I've ordered items uh, like beauty products for yeah, the skin. Yeah. Um, soaps, jams, jellies. I mean, it's it's just fascinating the variety. Yeah, sometimes it's. I think it's what makes it really cool. It's also sometimes a logistical nightmare. <laughs> I like wondered. people on our staff aren't always into it, but you know, because someone's like, coffees. yeah, you know, and some some a member will say like, hey, I really love this chocolate. Can you guys get mm -hmm. this chocolate? Or I really love this soap. Can you get this soap? Or you know, I need a new skincare product because everything in the store is chemical, whatever. I want something all natural. And then we'll go, okay, cool, and we'll try to find it. And sometimes we'll have items that you know, we'll add and we'll be like, this is going to be the, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread and it, and it won't sell at all. Um, but then sometimes we'll add an item like duck eggs, for instance, which was kind of mm -hmm. like duck eggs, I guess maybe people want duck eggs. And now duck eggs are like a huge selling item for us. Wow. Um, and people just can't get enough duck eggs, you know? And so it's like, all right, cool. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we have quail eggs next week. Ah, <laughs> you know? OK. Well, I'm going to have to take another look at the website. <laughs> so as we wrap up, and I, I love your enthusiasm, as we wrap up, um, you mentioned that your business, the Philly Food Works, is expanding. You've got a great mm -hmm. team. So tell me a little bit about your team. Yeah. And then also tell me about where you and your team are going. What's next for you? So the three people who founded it are myself, Ryan, who's about 30 years old, um, grew up in Ohio, and we met in West Philly at the doing urban farming stuff. And then Jamal, who's older gentleman, um, you know, over 60 years old, and, and he also was, we all met together in West yes. Philly um, doing that. And he's, you know, born and raised in Philly. Um, and we all start it together and then we've we haven't had the luxury of getting the most you know uh, qualified people so we'll we'll hire you know we'll get people with lots of enthusiasm and then we'll all work our butts off and try really hard and and figure out how to um you know make this thing run um so that's you know so it's a it's a group of really enthusiastic a lot of young people um people who really care about the impact and care about the mission and are now you know in over their heads but figuring out how to make it work um, and Sounds like entrepreneurism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now, you know, we've expanded, um, you know, kind of sales keep, you know, basically doubling each year and it's great. We're looking at trying to move to more to the suburbs. Okay. Um, so we're in Balakamewood and Narberth now and we're moving uh, to Havertown and Ardmore mm -hmm. and actually want to get into Wayne as well. Um, we're working with Swiss Farms, which mm -hmm. is a drive-through convenience store, mm -hmm. and they're going to be a drop-off point for our CSAs. Oh, how cool! You're really thinking our outside farm the shares. farm. So to yeah, think. the farm bu farm share <laughs> box. <laughs> um, Excellent. Yeah, so Excellent. it's funny, you know, and it's a really, it's kind of an unexpected partnership, but it works really well, and it just utilizes both of us. It's utilizing un unused capacity, mm -hmm. and um, could be really cool if if. You know, all you need is a spot, you know, about four feet by two feet, and you can put 20 CSA shares there, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's, it's a really great, you know, finding those unlikely partners has been a lot of the fun. Well, again, great discovery. Yeah. I love how you took an idea from school mm -hmm. and an opportunity of outreach into West Philadelphia. 
and formed Philly Food Works. So thanks yeah. for being our guest. Yeah, thanks for Thank having me. Thank you so from. much. And, and I'm going to ask for one or two of these uh, yeah, garlic Yeah, you have all the garlic So, crimps. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> uh, my friends and family may not love me, but um, I, I'm going to go for it. Well, thank you again, Dylan, for being our guest today. Um, Dylan from Philly Food Works, and I'm Fran McNeil with Significant TV. Obviously, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs.